Hi everyone, welcome you all. So today we are going to discuss what is bandwidth and then we will look into what is data transfer rate. Actually both the terms are interrelated. Now let's get started. First thing first, let us discuss what is bandwidth. Bandwidth describes the maximum data transfer rate of a network or internet connection. It measures how much data can be sent over a specific connection in a given amount of a time. There is a, another definition in your book called Sumitra Aurora that is the difference between low and high frequency is called bandwidth. But actually when we are talking about computer science we do not talk about that. It is a simply how much data we can send to a transmission media. You can think of Bandwidth is used to describe network speed. It does not measure how fast bytes of a data move from one location to another. Since data packets travel over electronic or fiber optic cables, the speed of each bit transferred is negligible. Instead, bandwidth measures how much data can flow through a specific connection at a time. Okay. Now, when visualization when visualizing bandwidth, it may help to think of a network connection as a tube and each bit of a data as a grain of a sand. Okay, If you pour a large amount of a sand into a skinny tube, it will take a long time for the sand to flow through it. If you pour the same amount of a sand through a wide tube, the sand will finish flowing through the tube much faster. Similarly, a download will finish much faster when you have a higher bandwidth connection rather than a low bandwidth connection. And one more thing here you have to notice is you get a maximum speed which is equal to the lowest bandwidth of the connect communication media. Right? That is data often flows over multiple network connections which means the connection with the smallest bandwidth acts as a bottleneck okay which will be the best bandwidth you will get is a smallest bandwidth of your network connections right so we have two definitions for the bandwidths the first one you can see on your screen that is bandwidth describes the maximum data transfer rate of a network or internet connection. It measures how much data can be sent over a specific connection in a given amount of a time. And the another is bandwidth also refers to a range of frequencies used to transmit a signal. That is this type of a bandwidth is measured in Hertz and is often referenced as a sing signal processing applications. Okay, now let us move to our next topic that is what is data transfer rate. Uh, the speed with which data can be transmitted from one device to another that is called a data transfer, transfer rate. Data rates are often measured in megabytes, kilobytes per second. Okay, so generally you can see a megabit per second or megabyte per second. Actually, uh, I'm pronouncing it wrong here. It is megabit per second and megabyte per second. Okay, so it is a measurement of how much data can be transmitted through the communication channel. That is called data transmission rate or data transfer rate and it is measured in GPPS, MBPS, KBPS, uh, etc. Our next agenda point is protocols. Network protocols are a set of rules and regulations which are to be followed whenever there is a transfer of information in the network. Right? So let us go through the definition. Network protocols are a set of rules governing exchange of information in an easy, reliable and secure way. Right? Now you can imagine a situation where every company is in the market and setting up um, protocols for their own computer networks this will be really chaos because uh, hp computers may understand only other H H hp devices and can communicate with each other and may be comfortable with only hp devices and networks 
Similarly, for example, if we take an example of a Broadcom, then Broadcom devices may be comfortable with only Broadcom. So instead of means having many, many protocols and different standards, we have a standard protocols. They are used by each and every devices that are connected with the networks. So these set of rules, which governs exchange of information in an easy and reliable way are called network protocols. And in your screen, you can see some of the very popular protocols. They are called, uh, these are TCP and IP, HTTP, SMTP, POP3, FTP, and PPP. Some of these you have learned in previous classes, uh, in which I think you have learned TCP and IP. So TCP and IP, the full form is Transmission Control Protocol or in public internet protocol and as the abbreviation is self descriptive these are the protocols which are followed whenever you communicate over a internet okay and this is a simple um, request and serve basis protocol here what client does a client simply sends the request to the server and server understand and processes the request and information which uh, is sent to the receiver is divided into small small datagrams or packets by TCP only. So TCP is the protocol which is used first for dividing uh, information into small small packets and these packets are then uh, you can say uh, TCP also puts control information on these packets in a sequence number so that they, these can be reassembled. And then information internet protocols takes these packets and routes over the internet and uh, it is a kind of a post postman who does all the transmission part and then TCP again collects collects from the collect collects these packets at client end and reassembles it and if it finds that there is some missing packets or Damage packet it can send the request again. So this is a simple working of a TCP and IP. Then we have a HTTP. HTTP is a protocol which is used again in uh, what we call internet. It is called hyper text transmission protocol, and it is it is peculiarly used when you are viewing your websites over a network using a browser. So in most of the cases whenever you, you uh, open a website you use http colon double slash www.google.com yahoo.com or any other website so http is the protocol that is uh, that is to be followed whenever you are transmitting meeting a hypertext now what is a hypertext your website is made up of hypertext markup language so that type of a document is transmitted in a HTTP okay and it is a stateless as well as it can be used by anonymous users okay you don't have to have a username and passwords now the next is SMTP full form of SMTP is simple mail transmission protocol and it is generally used uh, for mailing and e uh, actually emailing POP3 is also a uh, post office protocol which is followed by the google for emails only and if we are talking about smtp it is related to sending a email okay and when we talk about a pop3 it is generally used for receiving an email and you must be wondering pop is okay but why three actually three is for the version three which is the latest in the industry uh, so it is called post office protocol version 3 so in nutshell we can say SMTP is the industry standard protocol for sending emails if you are looking to send email then you will use SMTP instead of any other protocol and we have POP3 is a protocol uh, which is used peculiarly for receiving email on a single device using pop3 means that your email will be accessible offline and deleted from the server 
right and there is a, another standard called IMAP uh, and it is a, one of the most common protocol for receiving email IMAP sync messages across all the devices for example if you want you are using a multiple devices and you want to have a particular message on or across all the devices then you should be I you should be using IMAP instead of a SMTP or POP3 uh, when you are config, configuring a, configuring a email email address or um, uh, from a specific vendor for example if I want to access an email which is on my a website let's say bcj aps net dot in and i want to configure it i then i have to set the protocol whether i want a smtp or pop3 or whether i should be going for imap and if i'm using multiple device then i should be using imap instead of a smtp or pop3 right because in when we are using a pop3 it will download and uh, remove the message from the server okay that should not happen so obviously IMAP will be my choice but according to the CBAC you have to learn SMTP and POP3. Now coming to our next protocol that is FTP. It's really very simple file transfer, transfer protocol. It is used to copy a file from one host to another. While copying a file from one host to another the problem that may occur are the communicating host may have different file name conventions may have different directory structures different way of representing data ftp over overcomes all these so you don't have to take care about whether you are transferring data from a mac server to the windows uh, system it will be taken care of ftp okay ftp is used when two hosts with different configuration want to exchange data between them FTP uses the service of TCP to transfer the file between client and server. FTP establishes uh, two connections, one for data transmission transfer on TCP port number 20 and one for control information on TCP port number 21. Okay. So in a layman language, you can say that FTP is generally used to transmit or, or transmit or you can say download or upload file from one computer to another computer. Okay. Now let us discuss about the difference between HTTP and FTP. So HTTP is generally used in uh, used to transmission data from the www or World Wide Web but ftp can be used to simply download or copy paste the file right now the first and most important difference is this only and the second difference is the basic difference between ftp and http is that http is used to access different website on the internet on the other hand the ftp is used to transfer file from one host to the other simple right now the next is HTTP establishes data connection only whereas FTP establishes data as well as control connection right what it does is simply um, access the data in case of a HTTP we are simply uh, writing www.google.com and the data is transmitted to the our uh, system but in FTP we are establishing a connection and we are going to have a control connection right and in http generally the port number we are using is 80 and in ftp we are using 20 and 21 in case you are using http http uh, appears in the url of the website and if you are using ftp ftp appears in the url okay uh, http is generally good for small uh, files like web pages whereas ftp are efficient and more used whenever we are going to transmit meta large files http does not require authentication whereas ftp uses the password for authentication and now you can simply understand if you want to access my website you can simply go to your web browser address and type www.bcjapsnet.in so in this way you don't have to type a username and password you can simply access that piece of information but if you want to upload or download something from the the file from from the server 
the same website then you have to uh, you sh you should be providing a username and password for example to modify a con content i need to upload a html page to the server then i require a username and password but if i want to simply access it user using a browser then i do not use a username and a password so this is another difference between http and ftp and the final is web pages or data content transfer to a device using http are not safe in the memory of the device right but when you are talking about ftp whatever file you are downloading will be saved in your device so this is the basic difference between http and f P. okay okay coming to the last protocol that is ppp or you can say it is a point to point protocol and it is actually a collection of a protocol designed for moving datagrams or packets across serial point to point links these protocols are used to establish and configure the communication link the network layer protocol and also to in encapsulate datagrams okay so these are the some of the network protocols which are in your syllabus this time and specifically specifically we will be talking about 2021 board examinations so you have to learn about specifically if you are, if you ask me http and ftp are really very very important and you have to learn the difference okay so these two are very very important rest you should be knowing their full forms only that's all for the day hope you have learned and enjoyed so bye bye and see you